everybody. Long time no see, and I'm excited to be alive again. Kind of something different, though. Probably never, I'm, I don't think I've, I've ever actually done this, but I have work to do because we are slammed. Um, I mean, spring's hitting super early at the shop, which is awesome. Uh, so a buddy of mine dropped, he drove six hours to drop his um, CM400T off to me. He just bought it and I uh, cleaned the carbs on it, perfect. But he got it back and it still wasn't running. It was like it was running on one cylinder is the way it, I heard it on the phone. So we brought it back over here um, to see what's going on so I can figure out what it is. And it's got no compression on the left cylinder. No compression. Right cylinder's fine. So I, I can get it to run on one cylinder, but it runs like a dog, obviously. Um, so tonight, I, I, this is, I, I'm so busy, I have to work after hours on, on this bike. So I'm going to invite you guys in on it with me. Um, we'll try it out. Um, it's not going to be perfect angles and perfect camera stuff, but I'm just going to be hanging out, getting this motor down. Let's see. Getting a little shot of it. Sorry for the lighting, man. We got new lighting, out and it's like, eh. you know, so I'm actually going to put a beanie on so my forehead doesn't um, blind you. But, yeah, so we're going to get the top end off this thing and see exactly what it looks like as to why this left cylinder has no compression. Um... I rebuilt a uh, 400A motor completely bottom top for him, so uh, it's awesome that he trusts me with his second one. Uh, and it's not really, a, it's not an automatic, it, it, it's a T, it's a 1980 twin, but they're pretty straightforward. There's not a lot to it, so I figured I can just start going at it, and we'll see how far we get tonight on it. Um, but the left cylinder is definitely has no compression, and I did a leak down test on it, and it's got 100% leak past the rings. And what that means is when I put the motor at top dead center compression and apply 100 PSI of air to the cylinder, it's going to tell me where it's leaking from. Okay, it's either going to come out of the intake, which means it either has a bent intake valve, a worn intake valve. It's going to come out of the exhaust. You can like literally put your ear up to the exhaust and hear like someone like blowing air. Um, so a bad valve or something on the exhaust. But if you take the oil cap out, and you have air, you can put your ear up to it, hear air rushing out of the crankcase, it's going past the rings into the crankcase. So that's where the problem is. So I have a feeling that that left cylinder, that left piston is gonna be slammed stuck. The rings are gonna be stuck on it or, I don't know. But I got, I, I had him pick up two pretty good pistons online. The skirts are not worn at all. Um, just in case the other one's bad too. And of course I got, whoa, almost dropped it. I also got some Honda parts. I don't skimp on rings. I love getting Honda rings. So we're going to do it. So again, it's not going to be like some big tutorial where I'm walking you through everything and step by step and all that stuff. This is me, me and you hanging out as I work late and work on this 400A and we're going to tear it down and see what's going on. So welcome. Thank you guys for checking out the channel. And again, sorry for the lighting, but it's the best I can do because of this crazy lighting that we got going on. But I also have it pulled up on my computer so I can see you guys comment and whatever. I'm gonna go ahead and pull it up on here. But I hope you guys are having a good riding season and all that stuff. I mean, I've been working super hard on, on the membership stuff that's getting ready to come out probably next week, to be honest with you. For you Nighthawk inline four guys or VT750s or the twin carb or single carb, if you go to my website, you might see something that's pretty cool that just came out. But um, I haven't really fully launched it, but a little stealthy launch to you guys who are viewing this right now. All right, let me uh, pull this up. And that's MotorcycleMD.com, by the way. All right, so. And that's MotorcycleMD.com. Quiet that. What's going on, manual? Thank you for the stickers. They have arrived in Toronto, Canada. Awesome. Kyle, Falcon Taco. Welcome, welcome. Chad, hope you guys are ready to kill some time with me. Joseph, I just bought a 72 iron head bobbed out. <laughs> have fun. I actually just got back from Charlotte 
um, at, a, at the congregation show, and it was awesome. I mean, you want to talk about iron heads and knuckles and tan heads all chopped out with the little hook bars. I mean, they were killing it over there. It was awesome. Let's see if I can get a good view on this. That might be good. Ah, but I do have a video I'm working on um, to get out to you guys. And see this lighting? It's like God's descending down on me. And if I shut it off, it will be completely dark. Alright, so. Obviously, the first thing I gotta do is get the tank off, get the carbs off, get the exhaust off. That's like the first steps to do. And I'm gonna try to kind of blaze through this with you guys because I don't wanna spend three hours on a live video. But I don't think, I mean, I don't see people doing this, so I thought it might be cool just to tag you guys in on something like this. Fuel lines off, bolts off, nothing to it. Just set this down. Over chomp. All right, so we'll probably do, this exhaust is gonna be a bear. I can already tell you that, they always are. You got this stupid twin converter, catalytic converter thing right in, in the middle of it. But I guess we can pull the carbs off first. Welcome you guys just just tuning in. We're gonna see why this motor has no compression on the left side. And if we don't get it all tonight, I'm not gonna go forward without you guys. So we'll see how far we get. I won't be able to just talk your ear off. Otherwise I'm gonna miss something. There's that. We got the choke cable and throttle cables on there. Grab that. That was barely on there. Okay. Choke cable is off. Almost. Intake boots were loose. And the reason why I wanted to do it because I feel like I haven't put out anything in a while and I just wanted to put something out. Give you guys something and let you know what I'm working on. What I'm trying to work on, at least. Live wrenching, that's right. Alright, so we got... Throttle cables on these are always a bear. I try to attack them from both angles. If it lets me. But I got a, uh, a trike to build on a Valkyrie. That trike kit's coming in tomorrow. I got, I just did a, a uh, or I'm currently working also on a CB750 and a 78. It has a 836 big board kit on it. And he had some top end issue. So I've been working on that, trying to get him straight. So a lot of motor work at the wrong time, you know? Cause this is like maintenance season, not motor overhaul season. And it seems like I'm getting more and more of that stuff. Um, so it is what it is. Working on this pool cable here. But if you guys want to comment below, um, yeah, you can go ahead and comment, and I'll read it as we go. I have it set up over there. Mm. 
Come on, baby. One came off. And we got, like I said, I'm sorry I can't give you guys like the best angles, but on what I'm doing. But I know Monday nights are pretty lame for people and they're lame for me. Monday nights have kind of turned into like my business night in a way. If you want to call it a business. I'm going to get a little scribe out. 90 degree pick to kind of help me with these throttle cables. But what I don't want to, what I didn't want to do is, the hardest part about this channel is like, I want to, you know, I work on stuff all the time and I want to, you know, record it, but... The amount of time it takes to record it and edit it, you know, and it takes forever. So doing this live thing is really helpful to me because it's kind of like right off the cuff, man. It's like I don't have to really edit anything, even though the quality is not as good as it could be. But it gives content to you guys. You guys can kind of get an idea of what I'm doing and why I haven't been putting videos out. Like I said, I am working on one right now. and It's like almost done editing. It's on... Some pretty cool facts about oil, which is why I wanted to do this because this is going to tie into that video a little bit um, about oil starvation and uh, the parts that you don't see in your motor getting affected by the dirty oil you use. That's really the, the general thing about it. So here are the throttle cables. Bloop. They're off. It's stupid breather hose. See if it wants to play with me. Breather hose. That's off. Show cable's still hanging out. Come on, baby. There it is. Uh, why is that off? That's not right. All right. Show cable. Finger stuff. There we go. All right. I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to pull the coils off. Pretty sure, but we'll see. We'll see how we go. All right, so that's loose, that's loose. You guys saying, live wrench and miss Monday night Q&As, I know, man. Never mind your good Cody, Mike Damata. Hey, Cody, got my stickers, awesome. Mike, glad you got them. Had four of these bikes, fully rebuilt them. You gotta remove the back wheel slide the air box back and then you can remove the carb. I'll show you. This is actually a good, good idea. Love to watch people work on stuff. It's really fun. Keep doing this. Hey, you never know. I'm actually gonna throw on some gloves. Glove works HDs. So, you do have to move the air box back, but I'm not going to go removing the tire, I'll tell you that right now. You never have to do that. The heck just dropped. The heck? What was that? Yeah, a nut drop. I'll find it. All right, 
that. So I'm gonna swing this stuff out of the way so it stops holding on to the air box. That whole harness is loose. And there's this bolt right here, holding on the air box on so this down on the left side. Free. We got this one. We go ahead and disconnect the uh, battery. Man, it's been crazy. I'm ready to get April over with. I'll tell you what, guys. Next, next, this weekend we got the shop's 50th anniversary coming up that I've been putting together for the past, shoot, probably four months, man. I'm actually in charge of all of the shop's social media, so it's kind of a cool trade-off. I get to hang out here as long as I want and do whatever I want for the channel, but I also run the social media for the shop, which benefits everybody, so it's kind of cool. So I'm going to take this loose so I can get to my I'm gonna pull this battery out I don't need that we have one bolt here holding the airbox on now it's pretty loose so that's that's all I need right there I'm gonna pull the let's see Yeah, look at this sweet cup my buddy made for me during the live. All right. That will probably happen more than once. Loosen up these band clamps. Actually, I'm going to try to take this. I'm going to try to take the flanges off with the carb all, all in one fell swoop. And we got some funky Allen heads on one side and some six millimeter stuff on the other. So this is going to take me a minute. There's that. Two at the same time. If you guys just tuning in, we're gonna rip down the top end of this. We're gonna, we're gonna try it. We'll see. If I have to end the the live feed for a random reason. Like my wife calls me or she needs me or something like that, I'll end it and then I'll, I'll just bring it right back up again. I'm a wanted person. These little six millimeter bolts are always a pain because there's not a lot of room to work on them. You can't really get a socket on them, so you gotta use a wrench. Like quarter turns at a time. It takes forever. And that light is hot. This beanie. Freaking sweating already. I'm gonna turn the fan on. other one so 
I'm not excited about taking his exhaust off, I'll tell you that. It's never fun. are a lot tighter than they probably should be. This one feels like it's not unthreading. It is. Let's go ahead and undo these drains on the bottom. Those out of my way. This bolt, I think, has probably been probably been cross-threaded because it's really hard to get it out. Not fun. That fan feels so much better. Let's see what else is going on. Like I said, I did I did put some uh, uh I got carburetor videos up for the uh, Nighthawk inline four carburetor, the VT750 twin and single. Both have full HD teardown videos of carburetors on the website now, currently. Um, let me know if you guys have any trouble with those. But I didn't really announce it to the world because I'm still making sure that everything's working right. But also getting ready to launch the membership portion, which I'm really excited about, actually. Be more consistent content. You guys are going to get some emails, those of you who, are, who have subscribed to my mailing list. All right, so we're loose. I'm going to sneak these out. Just like that. I just cleaned these, so I know that these are fine. I just, just cleaned them for them. See, I'm going to pull over your tire off. All right, so... Probably gonna have to do the coils. Oh, we'll see. I don't want to open the top up until I got everything else around it, so nothing can fall down in or anything like that. I guess. I guess. I guess. We will grab this exhaust. Um. Uh, give me some free play in this brake lever. Let's see. We'll take that off, this off, pull that muffler off, hopefully in one piece. This Actually, this header pipe should come right out. Let's try that first. Should. Should be in the keyword. So the flange is off. All right, let's see if they come off easy. That'd be awesome, man. I would love that. I also got a, you can't get the, uh, head gasket, which is like the most important part. 
from Honda anymore, which kind of which is kind of upsetting. But you can get the whole gasket set from, uh, I believe, four into one. So that's where we got it from. I also got two new studs for these. I believe one stud comes out all the way by itself. We're getting there, guys. We're getting there. It's actually a little eight millimeter head bolt on this side. I actually think I threw that in there because it wasn't it didn't have anything there for a minute when I was doing some testing. Guys who just turned it tuning in, this motor has no compression on the left hand side of the cylinder. Um, I believe the rings are probably seized inside the piston um, from it sitting or hopefully the cil hopefully what me and my buddy are hoping for is that the, the cylinder's fine. That would be awesome. Now, I, I, I could at least hone it out. So let's see how easy these pipes come off. All right, not very easily. So, They're held on by like a flange right in here. So what I'll do is I'll take the flange and not going crazy, but just kind of pry them up a little bit because they can break off very easily. And I don't want that to happen because these parts are made of unobtainium unless you buy them used. So I loosen that up a little bit. Come on, baby. Oh, the glories of working on old bikes. Left and right, left and right, left and right. Remember that. All right, so. <sighs> That's good. That's a good thing. I'm gonna put these right back in their hole. The flanges, flangellies. I'm not worried about shoving anything inside of the intake because it's all going to come off. I'm going to find it, whether I didn't or not. All right, I'll bring this up a little bit. 
what you guys are saying. What is the best oil to use on my 09 V-Star 1100? Uh, I would say 10W30. Probably uh, whatever factory oil that they, they, they suggest using. Found, I have found head gaskets for the 78400A off eBay, new old stock. I think it was a lucky find. It was a lucky find. If I can get a whole gasket set for everything for 50 bucks. So we just went with that. <coughs> All right, so we got engine mounts here. We'll go ahead and take those off. It's like 12 and 14 style stuff. Get that in there? Nope, I can't. Let's see if we can't take this cover off. I also got new gaskets for these two as well. Those are important to replace on these old ones because they get hot and they just like shrivel up and shrink pretty much. Where it's not keeping that torque down on the, on the gasket and then it leaks. Alright, so I can move that. I think I can pull it off without the coils. Thing off. I think so. I think I can. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, there it is. This is a brand new gasket too, because I went in there and checked his valves before I verified all this stuff, you know? So, it's a brand new gasket on the valve cover. That's off. All right. Let's grab that. Same two bolts on the other side. I'm gonna put them right back in there, perspective hole. I'm pretty sure this hanger has to come off here. Cause it keeps you from going all the way up how far you need to. So I'm gonna grab that as well. I might be able to move this camera around so I can get a, a spot to put it. If you guys don't mind, I'm going to move it a little bit closer. Um, might be able to put it there. Let's see. That's pretty good. Yeah. Not bad. Let me try it right here. Yeah. Sorry to give you a headache. Huh? Yeah, no. And that, that might be better when, when we're coming apart. Yeah, yeah, that works.
course. Alright. I hope I don't find any surprises either, Wombat. Um, Dan, those are snap-on impacts. Wombat, I'm hoping that the cylinder is good. That's, I have pistons. I have a feeling that the piston's gonna be uh, in bad shape on that left-hand side. I'm just hoping that the cylinder is uh, honable and salvageable. So I gotta hurry up and find out. So if we need to find one, we can find one. Because he wants it back as soon as possible. Right in the thick of the springtime. We'll put these back in there. All right, so we got, well, let's grab this um, flange on the back of here real quick. Uh, where are we at, where are we at? 12. One, two, three. I wish I had kind of like a chest mount for you guys, but it gets really shaky, and I haven't—I don't—I I haven't gotten one for the. I have a um, iPhone 8 Plus, so it's kind of a big, a huge phone. My clamp that I'm using right now barely even holds it on, so I gotta make do. So I just took the back flange mount right here, and that light is just killer. Anyways, right there. If I turn the light off and use my shadow light, it's gonna put shadows on everything, man, and then it will look like junk. Jordan, thanks for showing us this process. You're welcome, man. It's, it's, I, I haven't seen inside of it yet, and I, like, this is my favorite part of finding engine problems, because you, you get, it's, it's something new. It's always something, I mean, I know what to expect, but when you're first getting into it, it's kind of exciting to see what the heck it is and what's going on. So I'm gonna turn the motor through and get it to top dead center compression on the uh, number one cylinder, which would be the left cylinder, all right? And so that kind of relieves some pressure off of the rocker arms and stuff, so I don't just start taking all this stuff off and it puts all this weird pressure on the rocker arms, the camshaft holder, all that stuff. So I'm gonna turn it through So I'm gonna take this off over here. By the end of the night, my entire bench will be full of tools. I'm gonna take the uh, gear shift lever off. So I can take the left alternator cover off. There's that. See? And we got one, two, three, four, five, six millimeter bolts with eight millimeter heads on them. I just call them eight millimeter bolts. I know you guys are like. You know, some of y'all might be saying, well, it's actually a six millimeter bolt. I know it is. That's just how I call it out. Uh, I don't, I'm not normally calling out things to myself while I work, so. Now, I also, the guy who asked earlier about impact a little snap on Milwaukee. I actually got this one. Oh, yeah, the camera's right here. Duh. Um, this one. Bab Bauer. I, I really like it. This is for my little quarter inch drives. And I really like this one. It's, it's pretty powerful for what it is. And it was cheap. All right. Alternator covers off. Bing, bing, bing. I think 
I want to say that. Let me grab this. I want to say that the problem with the left cylinder, which will be the kickstand side cylinder, had some water, like it was in a flood. That's, that, that's what I personally want to think. There's not a crazy amount of rust or anything like that, but when I pulled the alternator cover off to begin with, way, way back when, it had a lot of this on, on the bottom portion of this, and this corrosion usually takes place with water. Um, this is a sensor for the ignition and as well as charging and all kinds of stuff. And it has this powdery corrosion on it, which I'm not too fond of. So I want to say that maybe, maybe moisture could be a factor. Maybe. Let's pull this over here. Sorry for this shaky video. I'm trying, guys. I'm trying. All right, so I'm gonna turn this through. I'm gonna pull the spark plug out here. Spark plug out, brand new, cause I put it in there. And now what I can do is I can actually turn this motor through and wait until I see the rocker arms, okay? So what I'm looking for is, as you turn it through, you obviously you have four different strokes. That's why it's called a four-stroke motor. You got, a, you got an intake, compression, um, exhaust, power stroke, all, the, all these different things. So I'm waiting for the intake valves to go down, which is telling me that it's allowing air and fuel to come th into the motor those will begin to close. As those begin to close, that piston's heading up the cylinder and getting ready to compress all of that air fuel mixture. And that would be the compression stroke. So I want this cylinder on the compression stroke, okay? And what I can do is I can either A, watch the rocker arms and see how they are responding, or I can just put my finger over this and turn it through and wait until I feel like a pressure on my finger, which would be the compression stroke. But this cylinder has very little compression, so, We'll see. So I'm just gonna turn this through. Um, the tensioner's on this side, so it's gonna spin clockwise. I'm sorry, counterclockwise. Whatever side of the tensioner of the motor is on, it's gonna spin opposite of that, okay? This side note. Unless the motor has two, two different tensioners on front and rear, like the CBX. All right, so turn this through. And what I'm looking for, let's see if I can get this. So the exhaust valve is opening right now. So it's on the exhaust stroke. It's, it's pushing all that burnt crap out. Okay, exhaust valve is closing. This is the overlap period where the intake and exhaust valve are both open at the same time. Just a small amount for scavenging. So the intake valve is now opening completely, or both intake valves. And now they're coming back up to close off. Now, I can look inside of here. On the flywheel itself right here, it gives me an indication of top dead center and fire, right? But I can look inside the cylinder as well and see that piston coming up and so I can get prepared. So, right here, I don't know if you can see this or not. I'm waiting for my computer to catch up. So I can see what I'm doing over there. So you guys may see this little nipple right here. It's, it's right, it's like made up on the case itself. Okay, there's lines on top of the flywheel. Okay, so right now we're, those are the full advanced lines. All right, there's, there's two little lines saying that at wide open throttle or when you're really opening it up, the ignition is advancing to compensate for that so now we're just turned it we're on the fire mark it always fires right before top dead center and there's a t mark right there we're going to line that up boom the left cylinder cylinder number one is in top dead center compression and that's all there is to it that's all i gotta say about that 
All right, so. Moving on. I get a better angle for you guys. So we can go ahead and take this cam cap off, this cam holder. Big old bolts. There's actually, right to the top of this frame, there's literally holes that run down through the frame so that I can pull these nuts here or these bolts, these long bolts, all the way up through the frame. It's pretty um, thoughtful of Honda to do that back then. I, I, I wish they, they still um, cared about their, their technicians like they did back then. <laughs> Because now everything is one giant puzzle piece. And usually you gotta pull the motor to do anything. So, these are probably, let me say, set, uh, 14s. I'm gonna say, let me send them to the end, 14. There's that. grab a extremely large breaker bar so I don't feel like banging my knuckles on anything. But we're gonna loosen these up in a little bit of a pattern. Just Oh, nope, it ain't gonna let me. So we'll go here. <coughs> There's that one. There's that one. And that one right there. Sorry for the shaky camera. It's attached to the bike. The camera is. So normally when I take these bolts out, on my last one I did for, for this guy, for my buddy Devin, um, the bolt smelled like straight swamp donkey, man. It was, I have never smelled something more putrid than old, rusty, burnt, moisture oil down inside the threads of a bolt ever. So I'm gonna take this off right here. There's our bolts right there. These actually look really good. I, I can already smell it. It, it. it smells like burnt, overheated oil. I'm gonna make some space over here. So those are loose. Thank you guys for, um, I recently got a, uh, an email from YouTube talking about, you know, just how the channel is doing and stuff like that. And it showed me like all the shares and stuff that I've gotten over the past month or whatever. And I owe it all to you guys, man. You guys have really helped the channel grow to what it is. Um, and I'm really thankful for that. This bolt doesn't want to come out of there. So let's try this one. Yeah. Right up through the frame. Oh man, there's like crud on the threads. Oh. Yeah, there's like rust. And look at that. Oh, that's nasty. This is what I'm talking about right here. Grab a rag. Yeah, there's a little rubber sleeve right there. It's supposed to stay down in there. This little front left. There's the rear left right there, okay? Trying to stay organized. All right, so this cam cover should come off. Voila. And what I'm looking for here, and this, this is some juicy stuff. 
this is like membership content right here. So what I'm looking for here on this cam cover or this cam holder, it's holding down this camshaft, is where here and here. And this looks absolutely gorgeous. I love it. I'm loving it right now. Um, no real signs of heavy wear. These are the rocker arms that ride up and down those valves that we were watching to see what they were doing. These, these look great as well. There's a little line of wear right there, but I'm not too worried about that. This is an old motor. Um, things aren't as efficient as they used to be. So what I am paying attention to as well are these uh, dowel pins. Okay, this kind of helps. What you got to realize that your motor, as it's heating up and you're moving and you're, and you're throttling through it and powering up and all that stuff, your motor is literally twisting. Like all the, all this head and this all this stuff is is like moving around on a very small level and shifting and torquing and all this stuff. And these dowel pins help keep this stuff all in line and, and set. Okay, it kind of minimizes that. On race motors, you'll see the, that these dowel pins are actually solid. They're solid dowel pins to help with that inefficiency of a combustion motor. So I'm gonna pull both of these out, put them right back in here, not drop it. I'm gonna cover these up and lay them over where my stuff is. What are you guys saying over here? Thanks for showing us this process, Lee Edwards. Do you not have a GoPro? I do have a GoPro, but I can't shoot a GoPro on live YouTube. I have to shoot the entire video and then edit the video and then send it out. So it's easier to do it this way. Um, the holes in the frame is definitely helpful. Yes, you're absolutely right, Randy. Too bad you're not doing this on the 750 Super Magna. Ooh. I'm going to answer a text real quick. Give me a second, guys. All right. Sorry. All right, so we also got, let's see, we got a tensioner on this thing. So we do want to loosen the tensioner up right here in the back. We're getting really close, guys, really close. So I'm going to take this tensioner off or this nut off, locking nut, to allow for the tensioner to move how it wants to. All right. And I have a cam right here, right smack in the middle. This is the, um, I'm sorry, the, the cam shaft. And then we have a uh, cam gear attached to it. Obviously it has to attach to, this chain wraps all the way down to the bottom of the crankshaft and it revolutionizes the way a motor works. So it revolves a certain amount of times past what the crankshaft does. Anyways, there's two bolts holding it on. I'm just gonna loosen them up for right now Just like that, and that's all I'm gonna do to it. Because if I back it all the way out, actually, you know what? I could just take this off, I'm sorry. Without dropping it down inside the crankcase, obviously. Right there. All right, so we got that. I I'm gonna make sense of these bolts I took out here on the case cover. I'm getting kind of bolt um, crazy on my bench right now. I don't wanna forget where this stuff goes. So that was the brake, I'm sorry, the gear, shift lever. We got, these are air box stuff. This is cam gear, this is choke. This is the, what is this? This is, what are you? Oh, your, your, your air box. And we got that, that, that goes there. One, two, three, four, five. And 
I am missing one. There it is, right there. This is the longer of all of them. We'll put that there. We'll put you there. And that's that, that was the exhaust bolt. All right, I know where everything goes, cool. Moving on up. You're absolutely right, manual. <laughs> no, what do you think? KC650. Zephyr 1100. Yeah, I'll pass. I know, that, I know that they have pistons and tires, you know, and carburetors and... I, I'll do anything once when it comes to motorcycles and stuff, but... Um, some stuff is just uh, a little bit easier to work on. All right, so what I'm going to do is, look, actually, you know what, let's put this, so let's put the right cylinder, okay, in top and center compression as well to take some pressure off of these tappets here. Shift sides for a minute. You guys see that? Is that good? Yeah, that's cool. Um, and I'll be going over valve adjustment stuff in the membership course that I'm, I'm getting ready to, to launch. So lots of cool stuff to come, man. I'll tell you what. If you haven't subscribed to the mailing list, you, you might want to do that because I'm going to send that information out to them first. <sighs> Loosen up these. I'm sorry, what am I doing? Turn the motor through, that's what you're doing, Cody. That's what you're doing. That's why technicians are just good in their hole by themselves, not talking to anybody. You know, because we can focus. Where's my, not that, honestly, I could take all of these off right now at, at very slow stages and it's not gonna hurt anything. As long as I do stages, it won't bother anything going on. But because I have people watching, I want to make sure that you guys know the correct method of doing this. So that's the uh, transparent version of the truth. Okay, 14, 17. So again, I'm going to watch this counterclockwise rotation. I have the spark plug in still, but I don't care. So there, there, there's the intake right there. I can hear it. Come all the way up to the top dead center. Boom, right there. I have both of the valves, tappets, are loose, exhaust and intake. That's how I know I'm also on a compression stroke. There's about four different ways that you can verify if you're actually on the compression stroke. But the compression stroke is key to everything when it comes to timing, when it comes to everything. So not just, because you can have it on the exhaust stroke, you're right, but that's not where you make your adjustment stuff at. That's not where you time it at. You, you time everything based off of top dead center of the piston, top of its movement at the compression stroke. When all valves are closed, that's when you do stuff. As long as you can harness that knowledge, everything else comes pretty easy unless you're working on like a ST1100 or a... Okay, that's why I have the breaker bar. Or a, um, uh, let's see, like a V, um, wait, what, what am I thinking about? What bike is that? That's the, um, which one has the VTEC? It's the, uh, I keep wanting to say VTX, but it's not. It's the VTR? VTR, no, that, that's not right, is it? It's the, dang, now I'm, uh, hold on. I gotta think about this. It's the... Uh, what is it? It's the... Gosh, dang it. It's gonna bug me now. VTR? 
VTR 1300. Maybe. It's got VTEC in it. That sucks. Doing valve jobs on this. Okay, let's try this again. There it is. Come on, baby. I just break my socket. No, we're good. We're good. False alarm. False alarm. I didn't break it loose, though. That's what's up. Alright, these are all loose. These little plates on the right hand side right here, they hold the rocker arm shafts in and that's a different area that you want to inspect if you have some like severe damage going on. Like this is off of a, uh, show you guys something. CB, a 78 CB 750. Rocker arm shaft for the rockers. I don't know if you can see this scoring right here. That's when you want to pull those out just to inspect all that kind of stuff. But these are fine. I'm gonna take these out. There's that. There's our right hand side. We're making moves, people, making moves. How much time have I killed with your guys? How long, how long has this been? 60, 62 minutes. And you guys are hanging in, man. That's what's up. All right, there's one. Thank you guys for, you know, choosing to watch this with me, man. That's awesome. It's a huge blessing to have you guys with me. For real. And an honor. And I'm humbled and all that good stuff. A lot of new subscribers lately too, so if you're a new subscriber watching this, man, welcome. I don't do this often, but I wanted to get something out because it's been a while. I'm, I'm, I'm editing 20 different things at once to get some content out to you guys, and I just end up never, never getting anything done. So I thought I'd just use this time to help out a buddy of mine to get his, uh, so that I can smooth out my schedule, bring some content to you guys, something cool to watch. Maybe hasn't been done yet. And bring you into my world for a minute. Because I, I do lots of cool stuff like this, man. And I just don't get to record it, you know, because it's just... I can't, I can't record during work hours. Because um, that's not the time to do it, you know. And I'm, I have to make money and obviously, you know, pay bills. So I, I have to work good and efficient during hours at work, which are nine hours a day. There it is right here. All right, this rocker box should come off. Rocker box is more of a Harley term, but it's the same thing. All right, cam holder number right side. Again, we're looking for wear here. There's none, which is fantastic. The cam looks freaking awesome. Um, we got our dowel pins right here. We keep those in the in the allotted sizes. There's no wear here, so there's no need for me to pull out these rocker these rocker shafts because everything looks really good as far as external goes. If I if I saw wear here, wear here, wear on these guides right here for these tappets, I would pull them out. But we're not, we're not gonna bother. And that's just the only reason why I can do that is because I. I know what the problem is, and this ain't my first rodeo. So I'm gonna grab the other bolt off of the cam on this side, and that should fall loose. I can't get a clean grab on that right now, so I'm gonna not use my impact on it. 
Only if I can get a really clean grab on it will I do that. I, I, I don't want to round it off or anything like that. So let's grab this. Oh, there it goes. I put an extension on it. Where are my extensions? There they are. I might be able to get it off because I'm not getting held on by a lot of torque, so. There it is right there. Also, you guys can't see this, but on the um, when you re reference the service manual, when it comes back to timing this thing, um, which I may or may not show later on, um, once, all I wanted to show you guys is really what happened. And then I'm gonna, have to do, I'm gonna have to maybe do the repair on my own, or I might record it, I don't know yet, but there's timing marks on these cams, on the, the cam gear for the camshaft. And so that's kind of something you pay attention to as well when you're going back into time with everything. So let's pull this out. This cam gear should drop off. Like that. All right, and then <clears throat> we should be able to pull this chain off. Like that. And then pull this cam out. At this point, there is nothing holding this head and the cylinder on. Only besides age and gaskets holding it together. So everything's pretty loose. So I'm gonna go ahead and just take this cam out. cam we're looking for wear here where it rides there's none there we're looking for wear here on the cam lobes themselves um, sometimes you see them kind of turn into like a vert ramp you know from wearing out in the middle this cam looks great I'm super excited that it does look great um, nowhere there so no one's ran this thing tight or ran it with low oil from what I can tell so far okay Pull this into a sprocket right here for our timing chain. And I'm gonna grab this cam chain with like a bungee. But for now, I'm gonna take a wrench and put it just like that. All right, guys, about to be the moment of truth. See what the heck's going on with this left cylinder. Take this wrench back out, grab the cam chain with my thumb, take a bungee, and just kind of strap this up for a second as I configure space to put all this stuff. All right, so I'm gonna do a little bit of a cleanup real quick, guys, because I have stuff everywhere, um, and I, I don't wanna move forward until I have a nice space to put it and everything is away. So I don't really need any more tools past this point as far as, I might need a 10 millimeter wrench, um, but it looks like that is it. We'll leave that out. Clean up, clean up. No one's here to help me out. Clean up. All right. Hope you guys are enjoying this, man. Flathead. Let's see. We'll leave that out. Don't need the suspension. Don't need this. Don't need that. Don't need that. Don't need that. Don't need that. Don't need you. 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 Tomorrow morning, I have to have this bench clear. I gotta do a air filter on a gold wing and a rear brake recall on it, which takes some time. So there's that. Don't need you, don't need you, don't need you. Or you, definitely not you. Over there. You 
back in your hole. I can put you guys over here. And you. I seem to have flung my choke cable holder somewhere. Um, so I'll have to look for that in a second. That's what happens. It's the nature of the beast. That can go there, that can go there. You are a exhaust flange bolt. Um, let's see. Cool. So the bench is pretty much clear. I'm gonna put this case cover over here. And cover up the camshaft and stuff with some rags while we do other stuff. We're gonna lay some rags out as well for the uh, head, as well as for the cylinder. Let me show you guys something real quick, okay? So, just so you guys see how busy things have been. That is my two table setup, okay? I have motor parts up here. I have a lawnmower completely disassembled back in the back. Me, So I have like stages. So I also have CB350 motor, Nighthawk 750 motor. I have an entire CB350 um, everything off of the frame down there, chainsaw. I mean, it's just, it's crazy. All right. So, I'm gonna stage this up on the left side actually so you guys can see the catastrophe. As you see here on top, there's oil in these little pockets here. That's good. That means there's oil pressure making it up to the top. When you when I reassemble this motor, all this will be clean and stuff like that. And you, I have to refill these little pockets with oil because the cam lobes, as they turn, they're literally dipping in and out of this oil pocket. Okay, so that's a food for thought. Well, what I can show you guys now as well is, as you saw on the cam holders on the top side, I'm also looking for that same kind of wear on the head side and when you see where on the head side that's a different story okay that's when s hits the fan and you either need a new head or somewhere or someone can no there's no real milling it i mean you could but good luck but there's nowhere here it looks great um my wife just texted me give me a second She got me food. That's what's up. What a good wife. I love that woman. All right. What are you guys saying? Almost broke your camera, though. <laughs> that bike looks a lot like my Nighthawk frame. I need lots of them gloves. I, I, I have some uh, discount codes, Lee. Um, I'll send them out in uh, a subscriber email. It's just for this month only. It's 25% off. It's an awesome discount. Um, Pete, what up, man? Cody the man, what's the difference between intake and outtake valves? Um, intake is intaking air and fuel from your carburetors. Outtake or exhaust valves are what is going out from that mixture that came in being burnt. So the, the exhaust valves are what's sending it out through the headers and through your exhaust so what you're hearing is that explosion going on in your motor out of your exhaust and the exhaust valves help extinguish that mixture being burnt out of the combustion chamber into the exhaust so it's it's it comes in it gets exploded and then it comes out so you get intake and exhaust are they different in structure um it all depends. Some heads have a two valve system on the intake like this and one exhaust. They have, so they have one big fat exhaust valve and two smaller intakes. Some have four valve system, two exhaust, two intakes. Some have uh, once the intakes are usually bigger or the exhausts are usually bigger. It all, it all depends on the motor. So there's a bunch of different setups to make it more efficient, more power and lack thereof. But they are 
they're pretty much the exact same thing, but the diameter of what the head is on that valve is what will be the difference. Um, that's what I meant, the size for 770. I'd, I'd have to check, man. I believe the 77 and 78 uh, have a different cam for those 750s. So the valves are different as far as any other of the 750s. All right, so uh, let's see. Let's move this camera a little bit. And we will try to pull this thing off. Is that a good shot? Maybe, maybe not. It looks like, why does it look smoky? That's frustrating. All right. So, we got our cam chain in the middle. I'm gonna try to hold on to it as I take things apart, but this head, let's see, we got a tensioner bolt there. Should have one here in the center. Let's see if I'm right. Uh, I don't see one actually. So we got that out. We got a bolt there. That's holding that bottom tensioner on. Let's go ahead and take that off. These, these are just final stuff to pull the head off. There's a tensioner on this right side or on the back of the motor. All right, so that's free there. And so that means I, I can take the head off by itself and leave the cylinder down first. So we'll, we'll try to do that. There it is, just like that. All right, so let's pull this out of the way. Off with your head. Pouring in the cam chain with my fingers underneath. What do I got? What do I got? There's a tensioner right there. All right, let's lay this over. There. Oh, it's a gasket. Okay. All right. There's our head. We'll look at that more in a second. I only, I only got two hands. All right. All right, we're getting to some more meat. Got a tensioner here. I pulled the bolt out of the back of that so I can take the head off, but this is where I believe our problem is. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Guys, how many people are watching this right now? 47? Check. I have not seen this yet. This will be a first for me. Let me move this camera. Holy crap. Holy crap. All right. Check out, where's the camera at? It's on that side. Check this out. That is that is piston that is gone. Look at that. You, you can see the ring. See that over there? A piston that's intact. Look at that.
because pre detonation usually happens happens where the spark plug is. So it's not. I don't think it's detonation, but. And someone said something about a valve. Um, Pete, that's what I'm thinking as well. Um, when parts of the piston get weak, they can get red hot, right? Red, red hot and start to erode away. I don't know. Let's, let's pull a cylinder off, man. That's, that's crazy. I'm glad we got pistons, man. But it makes you think, where the heck did it go? You know what I mean? Right, I'm gonna grab that chain again. Actually, I don't really care about it. We'll, we'll be all right. All right, here's our guide on this side right here. Dude, that's crazy. That's a first, man. That is a first for me to see a part of the piston on the exhaust side. It's... I mean, I don't know the history of the motor. Someone could have had it apart and then banged the exhaust valve against it. But I didn't have any... We'll look at the, um, the exhaust valve on the head um, to see if it came in contact with the piston. That's what, that's what we'll do here in a second. Let me uh, make some room. I am glad we got pistons, though, I'll tell you that. All right, so I should be able to pull this right up if it lets me, and it's not gonna let me right away. That's what I figured. So there's, there's, there's little spots that I can kind of grab onto. <clears throat> and see if it lets me lift it up, lift up its skirt. She's stuck on there, good. There it is. All right, moment of truth. What are you holding on to, girl? The gasket. <clears throat> See, let's go ahead and take this tensioner bolt out. Push that through so the tensioner can stay in the motor. <sighs> Gimme. I will win. There we go. All right, tensioner is free. Let's back up. Oh, the cylinder's not looking good. Oh, that piston looks awful. Why won't you come out? All right, so there is two reasons why you won't come out. Give me a second, guys. i to pull this clip out. Cylinders off. Oh no. Oh no. Dude, look at that. I gotta find a pin real quick. Hold on. Emergency. Emergency. Oh, 
long. I knew I shouldn't have taken that out so quick. There's a little cotter pin that holds on to the tensioner. Um, well, I'm not going to turn the motor through, I'll tell you that much, but I should be able to fish it out with, with a magnet. But, let's have a look at this real quick. Oh my gosh. I don't think that cylinder's going to be any good. <clears throat> Not good. It's not looking good, guys. So, this is the piston completely. The lands are gone. Oh my gosh. It goes straight through the skirt. This piston looks fine. There's no real wear on the skirt. I mean, but look at that. I mean, it's obvious to for you guys watching. What I don't like is like this metal has either embedded itself here or it's gone into the crankcase. They're scoring here on the back side. Here and here. There's chips here on the on the top of this crown from probably where metal was. It's bouncing all around. Oh man. Not looking good for my brother. Alright, this, this I'm gonna let me get set up real quick guys. I'm, I'm gonna so we can show the cylinder. Give me a second. Oh, I found my uh, choke language. Yeah. <sighs> I don't know if you guys can see that cylinder. There's the right side. It looks like it did for a while. There's a little ring right there, like a little rust ring. But this side, I mean, just there's metal embedded in the cylinder. I mean, I can try to hone it and see what it turns out to look like, but I think it's moisture, man. I I don't think it, it was a lack of oil. I think it sat for a long time, right? And he, not the guy who owns it now, but the guy before ran it. And when it sat, the rings were stuck and then it just started to tear straight into the cylinder. That's what I think. I mean, even the sides of the piston on parts that it doesn't normally wear on are worn. The rings are completely seized. This is the part I don't like, man. I now I have to call my buddy. He might be watching this now. Maybe not, but now we have to figure out a game plan. You know, is it? Um, yeah, they, they are pressing cylinders, sleeves, Mike. But it's finding it's it's finding someone who will do it for a fair price of what the bike is. You know, we're we're already at the point with what I'm doing now that he's gonna break even when he sells it, if he sells it. So it's how much money you're gonna dump into it. Um, so I need to call him and let him know, and um, he's gonna need a cylinder. 
and I'm I'm, I'm nervous about the, about that bottom end because that that much piston material missing. Like it doesn't just evaporate in, into th into thin air. Um, yeah, or lean. Yeah, whoever just said that. Who said that? Carrie. I've seen this many times with outboards with carbs leaned out on one cylinder. Absolutely leaning that cylinder out. It gets extremely hot inside of there because people don't realize that fuel actually helps cool things down. Um, but. It could, yeah. Um, let's look at the head real quick. We might need to call it quits on this bike, man. Seriously, because he's he's tapped out, and I and I and I understand. He wasn't expecting all this. He he got it for cheap. The guy said it was running. The guy had the carbs so jacked up that. There's no way it, it was ever running right. The, acceler the accelerator pump wasn't hooked up. I mean, it was just, the guy botched it. Guys who should not be working on motorcycles were working on it and ruined the carbs. And I got them back to where they should be because that was, he, I, I, it sat for years and I already knew that the carbs were gonna need to be gone through. But you can't expect stuff like this all the time, especially when you're buying used old bikes. You can hope that the guy's honest and he knows what he's talking about. I'm gonna lay some rags out and tip this head on his head. Gonna be a bunch of oil there. Ugh, I got them running my freaking pants. Dang it. Sorry, wife, if you're watching this. So. Let's see, that would be the left cylinder on this side. I don't see chamber. Um, yeah. Well, we'll stop there, guys. I mean, because there's no point in going forward right now until I get more contact with with my buddy. Um, I was hoping for something better, to be honest with you. Not that bad. I just like his 400A had the same problem. Had uh. No compression on the, on the left cylinder, and the piston was worn, and that's fine. I can replace the piston, hone the cylinder, boom, but this, the, this cylinder is toast. And there's probably metal in an oil pump and all that stuff. So, thank you guys for tuning in, man. I'm going to lock it up now. That's, that's as far as I'm going to go. I'm going to do a little, bit, a little bit of some cleanup, but you guys have seen it, man. That piston is completely scorched, completely. The metal is burnt off and melted and gone. Gone. So I'll let you guys know how it turns out. Um, that sucks. I feel bad for him. But again, thank you guys for, for checking out this video tonight. I know it took almost two hours or something like that. Um, but... Check out the the uh, website. There, I have some. I've put some carburetor video cleans up there. They're uh, high definition. I go through step by step and my carb cleans on how to do them professionally. I have it Nighthawk carb, a 750 carb, which is pretty much almost the same for all inline fours. Just about. There's more parts, obviously, for any other inline four. I have a VT 750 twin carb, a VT 750 single carb. I'm working on a CM400, these carbs I am working on, but they're on the website and they're available for um, if anybody wants to purchase them. Um, I am selling those because they are just extremely high quality and I wanted to give the best opportunity for someone to clean their own carbs in their own space. You subscribe to the mailing list where more and more information will come out. Be looking forward to the membership live. 
um, stuff going on, and I have a bunch of cool stuff going on with that, guys. So thanks for hanging out. Cody from Motorcycle MD. I'm tired. I'm going to go home and eat. My wife's calling me. See you guys around. Look forward to the next video coming out on YouTube. Later.